Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool zooming in effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need for this zoom in effect is we need some content. And now I'm just going to Adobe Firefly to generate some graphics. This first one, I just search for a TV on the ground in a fantasy world. And I put some parameters in here like steampunk, vibrant color, studio lighting, blurry background. Then it moves into the next scene, which is going to be a window in a door. And then I have a screen in a distance. And then it's all going to end up here on this uh, floating city. So once you have all of that, download them and put them into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I'll just show you what I do on one image and then you can do the rest for all of them. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to rasterize that layer. And then once I've rasterized the layer, then I'm gonna grab the lasso tool and I'm just gonna draw a quick circle around that area down there. And then I'm just gonna to go to edit content aware fill. And once you're happy with the output, then you can output it to the current layer. Just press apply. And now the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to highlight this uh, world because we wanna separate it from the background. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the object selection. I'm gonna click on the world and then it will highlight it for me. Now it's not gonna be perfect. So what we need to do is we need to go to the quick selection tool. I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm gonna hold option and anything that I don't want, I'm just going to make sure that I get rid of it. So for example, I don't want that. So I'm just gonna clean that up. And then once I have that, then I can press command X to cut and then I'll make a new layer and then I'll just paste it in there. So now we're left with a big hole in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to highlight all of that and I'm just gonna go to edit, make sure that you're on that uh, background layer, go to edit content aware fill and see what it comes up with. Now I've played with some of these settings and I'm pretty happy with this. Doesn't have to be perfect, just press okay and then apply it and cool. And now, so we have separated the world from the background and that looks pretty cool. Now what we have to do is we have to export each one of these uh, photos individually. So if you just go to file, export as, export them all individually. When you get to this one here, this one has to be a PNG with a transparent background. The rest can be JPEGs. So here we are in After Effects. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine at a duration of about maybe let's say six seconds. Press OK. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to import our files. So I'm just gonna right click and import our files. And once I've done that, then all I need to do is just drag them all to the timeline. I'm just gonna put my main files in there and then I'm just gonna press S for scale to bring them down to whatever size fits. And now we can actually work on that. So if you look at all of the clips, that's the first one, that's the second one, that's the third one, and that's the fourth one. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust the anchor points for each one of these clips. So I'm just gonna grab this tool over here and just make sure that I move it to where I want it to zoom into. Again, doesn't have to be that perfect, but just grab the anchor point, put it in the middle, and then you're good to go. So for the first picture over here, what we need to do is we need to create a mask. So make sure you're on that layer. You can grab the pen tool over here, and then you can draw a mask around this area here. Now, when you get to the end, it's going to delete everything else. So what we need to do is we need to invert that. So I'm just gonna click on inverted. And then I'm just gonna also press F for feather and just add a little bit of feather just to soften the edges. So now that I've got that first mask done, I'm just gonna move on to the next one. Make sure you're on your second layer and then repeat the process again. And then finally the third layer. And if you need to go back in any one of these layers to rearrange anything, you can do that. Uh, the more cleaner you can make it, the better that it will be. And if you hold option and you want to only move one part of that um, mask, you can do that as well just by holding option or alt. So now what we need to do is we need to animate this. And what we're gonna do is we are just gonna press S for scale. And we're gonna start here and we're gonna turn that little stopwatch on. I'm gonna move forward probably about 20 frames and I'm just gonna move that scale until the new screen is revealed and you have nothing around the edge. So now when I preview that, 
we have a small little animation that looks like that. And if that's too fast or slow for you, you can move uh, this uh, keyframe however you like. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to highlight those keyframes and then we need to go to Easy Ease. And then I'm just gonna go to the graph editor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that there's a little bit more acceleration right in the middle. So now if I play that back, there's a little bit of acceleration there and that's looking pretty cool. So now what I need to do is I need to do that with the next image as well. So again, I'm gonna repeat the same process, press S for scale, I'll hit that stopwatch and I'll move forward about 20 frames. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that it's zoomed out. I'm gonna highlight both those keyframes, go to uh, animation, assistant, easy ease, and then I will just do the same process again. So I'll bring those a little bit closer in the middle. And now if you play that back, so now we've got one and then we've got two, zoom ins happening. So we're gonna do the same thing for the last one as well. So I'm just gonna press S for scale. I'm gonna hit that stopwatch. I'm gonna move forward in time, probably about 20 frames. And then I'm just going to zoom it in until everything disappears, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press F9 for my easy ease. And then I'm gonna go to the graph editor and I'm just going to move it just so there's a little bit more acceleration or something like that. So now we have three different zoom in effects and that's looking pretty cool, but we need to change them up a little bit. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna move these keyframes and just stagger them a little bit. So maybe we'll start maybe something like that. So now once we've got all of our animations, the next thing that we need to do is we need to put this on, which is motion blur. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it on the first three layers. And now you can see that when it zooms through, there's a bit of motion blur that will help sell the effect. So now we need to work on the final layer. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to import our world. And I'm just gonna put it above that layer. I'm just gonna scale it down so it fits in the composition nicely. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add my balloon as well so I can I can maybe have the balloon there and I'm just gonna put the ship as well. So maybe I'll just scale that down slightly and I'll just put that there in the background. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna import some clouds. So now I've got some clouds in there and I'm just gonna scale that down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it around and I'm probably gonna duplicate that again and maybe put some clouds on this side. I'll scale that down as well something like that. And maybe I'll put that underneath the balloon, just like that. So now what I need to do is I need to animate the cloud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit P4 position to bring up the position keyframes. And I'm just gonna hit that stopwatch. I'm just gonna move this cloud to where I want it. So I'll probably have it start over here, move to the end of my composition. And then I'm just gonna move it till it's probably around in the middle somewhere. So now if I play that back, now you can see that the cloud is moving. And if that's too fast, then all you have to do is just adjust it to however fast you want. So I probably wanted to have, you know, a little bit of uh, movement, but not too much. And I'm gonna do the same thing again for the other cloud. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for position. I'm gonna move forward probably to about five seconds. And then I'm just gonna move it, maybe something like that. So now I've got two clouds, you know, moving. One is slower than the other. And I'm just gonna put that underneath the world so it goes in the background. Same with the other cloud, just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the balloon. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for position. And I'm just gonna go to the end of the composition. And I'm just gonna move it up slightly. So it's around something like that. So now we have, you know, the balloon working and I'm just gonna make that a little bit slower. So I'll probably have all the animations starting at the same time. So the final one that we're gonna work on is the ship. So I'm gonna hit that stopwatch for position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it to where I want it. And then I'm just gonna go to maybe send it off the screen, something like that. So now when we get to that section there. So what you want to do is you want to keep all of your keyframes probably just a little bit before they it zooms through. 
and now we have all those elements moving as well. The final thing that we can do is on the world, if we press P for position, and then I'm gonna hold option, we can press and we can write an expression. So wiggle, let's put 0 0.2, maybe five, and now you will see that the world is also moving as well, ever so slightly. So now to play this back, what we have is we have a nice zoom, and then we get to our planet over here and everything is moving. So I'm just gonna move these keyframes just so when it starts to zoom, it's all animating as well. And I think that's looking pretty cool. And the final thing that we need to do is we just need to dress it up. So what we can do here now is I'm just gonna highlight all of those keyframes and then I'm just gonna go to composition and then I'm just gonna go to layer, pre-compose and I'm just gonna move all the attributes into that comp. I'm just gonna create a very simple scale in effect for that entire uh, six seconds. So probably to about one, maybe 110, just so it fits on the screen. So now it's always moving in. And the next thing that we can do is we can add an adjustment layer. So the first part of the adjustment layer is to add an effect called noise. I'm just gonna bump up noise to about 10%. And then what we need to do is we need to grab another new adjustment layer. I'm just gonna put it underneath the noise and I'm gonna search for Lumetri color. And I'm just gonna go to creative and I'm just gonna pick one of these colors in here. So they all have different variants. And I'm just gonna go with the SL Blue Moon just so it kind of uniforms the colors a little bit. Now, the final thing that I did is I added a vignette around uh, this composition. So if you do have access to Red Giant uh, Carousel, it enables you to create a nice little vignette and it comes with like heaps of different presets and things like that. But if you don't have that plugin, then what you can do is you, you can download some stock footage that creates the vignette for you. So here I've downloaded some stock footage and I'm just gonna put it underneath my noise layer and I'm just going to, you know, put it up and so I've got a vignette like that. And so hopefully that all ties it all together. So anyways guys, thanks for watching this quick tutorial on how to create a very simple zoom in effect. I hope you learned something, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.